what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick one on web design and five plugins that we use every day in our web design projects. So we've got Color Designer, which is used for generating tints and shades of different colors to help you set up your styles. We've got Feather Icons and Iconify, so that's two and three, both on icons, so we'll get into that. We have Lorem Ipsum, which will help you with your wireframes and just adding in copy whilst you're waiting for clients to write copy or copywriter, whoever's doing it. And lastly, we have Content Reel, which is a great little plugin for kind of generating people's names and addresses, phone numbers, demo data, little avatars and stuff like that. So let's go. So Color Designer is a great plugin which will allow you to generate tints or shades of various colors. So maybe you've been given just two colors. You've just got like a black and you've got a highlight color. And actually you want to create a bit more differentiation in your design. Maybe you want some lighter tones of this and some lighter tones of this to give you some different section backgrounds of different text colors or something like that. Um, and the brand designer hasn't given you full guidelines or something like that, this is where this works. So on a Mac, we're going to do, we're going to do command and forward slash, and we're going to type in color, and then I've got color designer in my list. So if you don't have it, which you probably won't, we're going to go to plugins, you're going to go to find more plugins, and then you're just going to search color designer, and it's the American spelling of color, hit run, and you are good to go. So when we select a swatch, it gives us by default tints. Now tints are lighter versions of a color and shades are darker versions of a color. These are quite nasty, we won't be using these, we'll have this as our darkest color and tints. So let's say we want to generate three more tints here, so we just set up this little auto layout frame. And quick tip, if you hold command you can select a single layer inside any grouped element, any frame or anything like that. That's how we're doing that and if I select this one you can see it's going to update our color designer UI. So Eight, that looks good to me. And what we can do is we can just hover over one. Let's say we want to take this one as the lightest one. We can click the plus, we can copy the color. We can come down here. I'm going to paste the color in here. I'm going to come like this, detach that from my styles, hit enter, and there we go. Now, as you can see, as I'm clicking around the place, it resets this, which is quite annoying, but fair enough. So we just click back on here again. We're still here and let's take this one as our second color. So let's paste this code in here for reference. Let's detach that from the original style, paste that in, and we're good. And then we get one more in the middle of all of those, so maybe this one, I'm gonna copy this. Same again, detach the style, paste in the code, paste in the code, and there we have it. We now have four different tints of this nice shade, so that works really well for me. And then of course you can call these whatever you like. And what we'll do is we'll just break this out for now. And we want to set these up in a group of color styles. So where we've got the fill color over here, we can click the four dots, add a new style. And if we want to group them, we just need to use a forward slash. We're going to call the group brand and we're going to call this four. We're going to grab this one and we're going to group it. We're going to say brand forward slash three. And you don't need to do a space, it's up to you. And last one, we're going, not second to last one, we go brand two. And then finally we go brand one. And now if we have a look down here, we now have a group of colors which we can twirl down one, two, three, four, keep it nice and organized. So of course, this is gonna vary project to project. Let's do the same for our neutrals. So yeah, let's get color designer up. We're gonna get tints again. And this one looks quite good. Maybe we'll increase the number of shades here, the number of tints so we can get a slightly lighter color over here. one let's go something like this looks nice for now and obviously you can just update these later that might be nice for a paragraph and then something like this looks good to me but if you're working with an art director or something they can guide you on this stuff so there we go we've now got a range of neutral so we'll do the same again so what we can do is we can write neutral Four. I'm going to copy that this time to make it quicker. Paste neutral three, neutral two, and lastly neutral one. And there you go, a few minutes, and we've got nice organized styles down here. And if we wanted to, we can pop our neutral in here at the bottom. So in our range of neutrals, we've got darkest to lightest, and we've got full white should we ever need it. So that's color designer, how nifty is that? Next up, feather icons. This is a really nice icon pack. We'll do the same again. 
open up feather icons. Now in the free version here, we've got 282 icons and we can just search in here, which is nice. And then when we find an icon we like, maybe we like this cursor, that looks nice. We can close that. Now this is the first annoying thing. You see here, we can see the name of the frame here, which means it's not actually inside this frame. Super annoying, but you can just cut it, click the frame, paste it, and now that's a lot neater. And it's actually inside this frame now, which is great. Now, the first thing to look at, you've got stroke weight here. So these are all editable. So if you need to, you can just click this, hit enter, and that selects everything inside the frame. And we can change the, the stroke weight if we wanted to. I'm going to leave it as it is because I think they're designed really well. But what's going to happen is when when we move these around and stuff and we scale these up, you can see the stroke weight is staying at two pixels. So I think it's always best to keep them at their default size, 24 by 24. We'll hit enter, we'll command click, and we will outline the stroke. So now when we scale it up, everything's going to scale in proportion. And what we might also want to do is flatten it as well. So this is now one shape rather than two shapes, which means that when, if we're developing later and we copy it as an SVG, the code is gonna be shorter, so it's gonna be cleaner, faster load times throughout a project. So there it is there. I'm gonna change my selection colors just to one of the stars we've already got, so neutral four. There we go. And let's have a look, it's called mouse pointer. That sounds good. I'm gonna command option and K to create a component. And then let's go again, feather icons. Let's have a look, maybe we want this home button, that looks nice. So we're gonna cut this, paste it, drag it in here. So that behavior is quite annoying, but what can you do? We're gonna do the same again. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna outline stroke, we're gonna flatten, we're gonna grab our frame, change our selection layers, selection colors, there we go. And that's called home and that sounds good there. And then later on in our designs, what we can do, let's say we've got an icon, some text. We design something very quickly. We'll get a smaller size of text. So let's say we've got an auto layout like this. Let's make our selection colors all match. So we've got something like this and we've got a frame. We can just double click into this icon and because we set them up as components, we can now switch to whatever icon we like. And there we go, that's feather icons. So just important things to know is just outline them, flatten them, change the selection colors, and then your future self is going to thank you. Okay, icon pack number two, Iconify. Again, you can use this for free. So we're gonna try and spell it right. There we go, Iconify. Now this is kind of a compilation of loads of different icon sets, whereas feather icons was just that one style. This has got just millions. So you can see here, it's got material symbol, Google material icons, karma, which is a nice one. There's just loads in here, which is really nice. And you can spend hours sifting through this if you wanted to, or we can just search for what we want. Here we go, we can navigate through the different pages, like there's loads of different styles. Perhaps we want this one. And with this, you can just drag them out of here and look at that. It's on the page, it's inside the frame. That is lovely. And again, we can drag this one. Um, I don't mean that's essentially it. The, so the UI is slightly friendlier, but I put can be a bit hit and miss. Um, sometimes you drag these in and they're, you know, 2000 pixels wide. I got lucky here, both are set up correctly inside 24 by 24 frames, which is great. And if we have a look at what's inside, so we've got a frame here and we've got the vector inside and we can see it's set to scale and scale, which is great. And we can see it's already outlined. There's no strokes or anything like that. Sometimes there'll be strokes. Sometimes they won't have kind of equal spacing around them and stuff like this. Sometimes they won't be set to scale, so they won't scale properly. So for example, this might be set to left and top, which I believe is the default. And then when you make this frame bigger, it's stuck in the left and top. So all you'd come to, to do is come back to your master component. So let's say this is, um, we'll just create a component here. We'd come back to this master component and we just update the icon inside, set it to scale and scale, and then any instances of this in the future will scale correctly. And another really great thing about Iconify is that it's got good social logos. So if we have a look, for example, look for the Facebook logo, Obviously we've got some, some wacky stuff going on here. Like you, you shouldn't really use this one, but you can have a look at the Facebook guidelines and see, I think this one is one that you can use. 
There you go, so that's an on-brand version. Whereas if we have a look at something like Feather Icons, have a look at Facebook, you see this isn't really the Facebook logo, is it? I think Facebook would get quite annoyed if you used that symbol. So just worth being aware of, I would always use the official symbol. And if you, you know, if you don't want to risk it, you can obviously go and find the official symbols um, from each social channel's sort of downloads page. All right, on to the next one. All right, Laura Mipson plugin, amazing for generating paragraph copy, I would say. Headline copy, bit hit and miss, I will show you. So what happens is we obviously, we do command and forward slash to bring up our plugin. Um, it says select some layers. So we can select this, we'll add a title here. So we have two options. We can either choose the number and the type. So we can do five characters, words, sentences, paragraphs. We can up that, of course, to whatever we want and generate. Or we can auto generate. And if we do that, then it's going to perfectly fit the amount of text to the layers frame. So we do auto generate. There we go. That looks good. And then here, let's do it again. Unfortunately, you do need to load it up each time, which is a bit of a downside. So we can auto generate here, or maybe we want to do four sentences let's generate and there we go there's our four sentences that looks good and this might be helpful for you know producing wireframes at the start of a project sometimes people aren't very confident with writing copy or don't know how much so what you can do is we can give them access into the figma and say hey come and have a look and write something to kind of match these kind of lengths of text that's the only real reason we use it for ideally you want to be working with live text if you can like actual real world copy it's so much better going to dictate your design a lot better but this is a worst case scenario and let's show you what happens here on these little headers you might think you can just grab all of these and auto generate but what it does is it always starts with the same sentence structure so they're all going to look exactly the same so in this case you I mean you think maybe let's do it again auto generate it's just going to do the same thing so you could do maybe six words for this one Oh, what's happened there? That's only four words, isn't it? Let's have a look. Six characters, we're on six words, generate. There we go, job done. And then what we can do is for this kind of stuff, I mean, this might be you know, like features on a web design or website or something like that. Let's do sentences, we'll do four sentences, generate. And there we go. And we can say, hey guys, look, you know, we're looking for roughly this amount of copy. You can see it doesn't matter if headers roll over two, two lines, that's okay, we'll make the design work. And then these are obviously auto layout frames. And if we wanted these to match, we could just grab the ones which are short, set them to fill container like this. And now you've got a nice, neat grid. Last but not least, content wheel. This is quite a fun one. Don't use it too much, um, but it always makes me happy when I do. So what it's gonna do is, gives us loads of options for dummy content to use. So you can see we've got kind of text, so we can generate numbers, email addresses, full names, US addresses, dates, and there's all sorts of different things in here. Images, you can get like avatars and stuff like that. You can add icons and all kinds of stuff like that. So what might be handy, maybe let's put in some names here. So I'm selecting these by holding Command and Shift. So I'm holding Command so that I can click on one layer inside a frame. I'm holding shift to select multiple. So I'm gonna select all six, I'm gonna to come to text, go to full name, haha, <laughs> amazing. I didn't grab this one, so we'll just grab that guy there. And this plugin doesn't close when you use it, which is really handy. Um, so we see we've got a male, female, male, probably female, male, female. So what we can do is we can go like this, let's grab the females, we'll go to image, and then you can see you've got female avatars, male avatars, all kind of random. The reason we're doing it this way is because if we put in kind of random, we may end up with a man's name and a woman's face. Not necessarily a problem, but you know, let's just do it this way. So we've got female avatars there, grab these guys, we'll put some male avatars in there. Lovely, and then of course we can just grab this. And you know what we're gonna do using what we have learned from before, Lauren Ibsen, we're going to generate four sentences. Nice. And we can just, this one, so we can just copy and paste this in here. There we go. And we can just grab this guy and let's set that to fill like that. And there you go. Oh, these two to fill as well. 
and we've got a nice grid and we can just say to the client, hey, it's going to look something like this. Um, you know, give us your team, give us your bios. Doesn't matter if they're not the exact same word count, we can make it work. It's all good. So hopefully this helped. So quick recap, we've got color designer to quickly generate tints and shades. We can save those all as styles. We've got a couple of free great options in terms of icons and remember, um, the command option and K to set them as components and then make sure that they are outlined and they are flattened and that they are using some of your colors set up in your Figma style is really going to help you when you've got a massive project in the future. Uh, we have Lauren Ibsen for quickly generating some copy, although, you know, it's not the best, but what can you do? And then Content Reel for doing stuff like this. And remember that you've got phone numbers, email addresses and stuff like that. Really good to generate content for like a table design before you actually have the content. So hopefully that helps. Let us know if there are any great plugins that you use every day down in the comments. If you like the content, subscribe. That would really help us out. If not, no dramas. We'll see you in the next video.